JF we met last week, guys, and we're going to follow him to uh, a place where he's got all his sculptures because, believe it or not, this guy also does art. Amazing, unique art. Yeah. This is when I transited from uh, the uh, blacksmithing uh, ornamental work to, uh, you know, like uh, art, like... Um, Craft is like someone is usually usually useful in um, production, you know, objects. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then when you're an artist, you know, like the, what can define it maybe like uh, raw is like the, the difference between you create things that are useless mm -hmm. <laughs> just for the, the jo enjoyment of looking at them. Uh -huh. so this is all my my uh, sculptures that I've created. Oh my God! So I have all kinds, and we can go into details of. Each wow! Of absolutely, I would love to know about this piece this right is here. A co collaboration. It's a um, gazebo from the 16th century, insp inspired. So huh. You, you you have the roof there, but unfortunately, the last windstorm uh, blew that away, and I didn't put it back up. But essentially, it's a uh, copper and glass. Wow. Right here which had another artisan that joined in me and all the metal work with the leaf shapes and uh, all, all like... Uh, so you've built nature. all this from scratch, huh? Yes, that's it. You know, wow. from materials, metal and glass and uh, copper. Yeah. With glass, it's amazing. And uh, the inspiration was the, the um, Art Nouveau 16th century uh, uh, Period. Yeah, the times, huh? Yeah. And then, uh, if we go about it in, in, a, in a linear uh, time progression, the, the, the oldest to the newest, this is the same time where I was playing oh. with the materials. And this is, I call this one a uh, wheel of life. What? And it's it's like a, a flower of life, really. Flower of life, wheel right? of life. You know, it's inspired by the... Um, in India, you know, the Buddhists uh, have on their, their temples this giant wheel, and right. all the um, the the, no, the noble, uh, you know, like uh, notaries, lawyers, you know, all the all, like the judges, everything that balances, you know, like the, the feeds into mm -hmm. this, this vortex of life, you know, mm -hmm. and human life, you know, and then so this wheel of life, you know, and they have all these these trades, you know, and. And then it's all part of an ensemble, and I and got inspired by that vision and created this this uh, yeah beautiful flower of life, you know. And Very then, interesting. Yeah. And then oh wow! Evolved to um, to other like uh, this is donkey shop. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yes, yeah, this is my every every because I was thinking some at some point like early on when I started the. What do I make as a sculpture? And I realize Don Quixote is such an anti-hero. You know, every every artist essentially has a Don Quixote um, interpretation because he's such an iconic, you know, story. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the guy that never gives up. <laughs> he's, <laughs> yeah, he's just relentless. This guy, he just like hops in on his little. Uh, donkey and he goes about thinking he's a uh, he's a you know a savage uh, <laughs> warrior he's, he's just like this, this, this poor guy but uh, <laughs> like, uh he's, he's like so yeah don quixote de la manche and uh i love it there he is you know in full fledged so that was one of my my step up from um, the wheels you know i got more into uh shapes and forms and, and um when i moved on to i thought oh i'm gonna I'm going to work with different type of material. And wow. First, uh, You're amazing. This, this was my first like concrete and metal. and actually had a light at some point in it. But it's been oh, in yeah. many art galleries and uh, in moving. And it, it has a life of its, its own now. Wow. It has a plug hanging out here. I don't think it should be there anymore. So it you had that. The bottom. Right. Like, uh, so you've had that in many art galleries. Yes, and this car, this is uh, this vacuum, so it's a vacuum bust. Yeah, vacuum bust, and if you take it from the rear, you understand why it's a vacuum bust, because, like, it has, like, um, 
where the lamp goes and everything. It has a tail. And some could think he's a poop, you know, like a <laughs> number two going on. But essentially, uh -huh. it's like this um, this axis, you know, like, uh, and the light was in putting emphasis on this energy, like, going, nice. you know, going through you. This, this, right. You know, this, this, uh, this You've work. got incredible ideas. Yeah. You're definitely uh, an artist. <laughs> That's it. No, I really liked that. this first one, and I, I really enjoyed making this, you know, like... Uh, the satisfaction of uh, creating yeah. the shape and stuff. And then after that, I moved on. Some of these are not mine. Some of these okay. are just my private collection. Okay. But, um, this is like La Grimpeur's, the climber. <laughs> okay, the climber. So, so I decided from the, the bust, I, I thought, okay, if, this I did from um, my imagination. But then I decided, oh, I'm going to work with, with model because I thought what I could read about and all the stories about mm -hmm. art and sculpture and everything, they all had these muse and this relationship with a model, you know, like uh, right. uh, female or male. And then I was like, well, I got to try it. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so uh, I hired models and right. uh, I made like uh, this, this idea of this collection that I call, I, I'm biased to female models. I'm sorry. And then, uh, <laughs> I had I hired this beautiful woman, and then they would pose for me as I made these sculptures. So the grandpers, I would ask them what's their passion. Right. And would, I would I would so this woman told me like, well I really into climbing and stuff, and I'm like okay let's let's uh, try to capture that. You know? Right. So it's almost life size, and uh, it's hung this way because she's climbing a, a mountain ridge. Right. You know, and then there's the metal string there, and. Um, this whole idea of these these empowered women got really sunk into it and essentially i got gave credit to my mother on this one because she was like one of those early feminists when when feminism meant something you know now yeah it's sort of like uh exploited you know by all kinds of uh darker powers there but essentially it's women you know like um in the 50s, 60s, you know, we're claiming their, their, their spotlight time. You know, they were saying, hey, listen, guys, you know, like we do most of the work, honestly, and mm -hmm. then we'd like to be also on the spotlight. So my mother was one of those, you know, but they weren't like picketing in the street. They, they were just like actually doing the work and proving it on, you know, hands on mm -hmm. that they were e equal or better. Mm -hmm. so my mother was a movie producer and oh she, wow she did, did yeah awesome creative stuff and she managed artists uh, really well in her career and um so the, this this contemporary woman collection came about through that energy you know the energy of the empowered women you yeah. know and um this is a good way to maybe show one mm -hmm. like, um this is a typical, that's why I purchased this garden sculpture. This is a typical um, goddess, you know, based on the, yes. the, the Greek, you know, like uh, goddess, you know, like a beautiful woman that uh, she's not doing anything. Right. You know, just she, be. She's just beautiful, you know. Yeah. I mean, like, there's nothing wrong with it. But I mean, like, if you look at, at uh, Greek Roman sculptures, the guys, they're all like fucking warriors and they, they like, they got the power, you know, like right. she's got power, of course, but it's all like for pe other people's enjoyment. It's the divine feminine goddess. Yes. And yeah. It's all good. You know, I'm not saying that's not good, but of course it's, you know, I think women are entitled to claim the whole picture. So you've purchased this one. You did not make yeah, this one? But, but No, but I purchased it to be in contrast with what the way I represent. And you understand where I'm yes, coming from. Yes, absolutely. Go down this, this, this lane uh -huh. of discovery of uh, contemporary women. The next one up is like um, the one down here, which, so I tried um, the, um, the concrete, but then I thought I wanted to go back to metal. Of course. So this is all metal and it's huh. life size. And I call this one um, Uprising. Wow. So this is like a uh, my tribute to uh, human history and uh, the, um, the the exploitation of the feminine. Right. You know, to, for maybe more than 2,000 years, but let's not get into details about how long. Beautiful. And then um, 
this she represents you know the face unfortunately is not the best feature i think it's monkey like a little bit but <laughs> they're very hard to make these faces yeah but uh the rest i really enjoy I mean, come on and look at all those pieces you've put together to create i know this. it's, it's just like this mosaic and yeah. uh, essentially if you go if you go around here maybe you'll notice the pose you know she has like the high heels so oh, yeah, let me see. You, you know, it's the sexualization of women, you know, and then she's she's in a pose, you know, where she can be right. penetrated, you know, like a, she, so she's the prostitute in the Bible, you know, she's um, right. I see Ma Marie Madeleine, you know, where she gets, you know, to uh, she gets judged and Jesus comes in and says, uh, it, who has never sinned, you know, like um, right. pick up the first stone. But this, I twisted it around. I, I, I used, so Marie Madeleine, the prostitute, the, 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 the ultimate giver. Which we all know now is a false story, but yes. it's, a, it's a good representation of um, an historical oh, yes. part of and our... It does, it, does, it does represent... Of our evolution, um, right? The unfortunate um, slavery of women, you know? Mm -hmm. and then, but this time around, though, in my sculpture, she's picking up the stone herself. And she wow. will judge the world. You know, like the empowerment is happening. I got here. goosebumps going so on. The, 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 and then she's, she's, uh, she's supported by what paradise, the divine. You know, like these divines, they represent the divine, the axis. Wow. And then so this, and this, the, the, she's like, she has the Radin thinker. It's a tribute to Radin, you know, which is the, mm -hmm. one of the most famous sculptures in Wow, there's times. a. I mean, there's a lot of thought yeah, that went yeah. into this. Well, it's, I, it's a tribute, you know. It's like a combination of uh, of things. And I started off this collection with this this statement. And the, the breast. There's only two, of course, breasts for a fem uh, human female. Mm -hmm. But in the um, in in Rome, ancient Rome, there's a sculpture. It's called the, the Louvre, la, la, la Louvre Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the wolf. She has all her breasts, six mammals, you know, that right. are feeling Romulus, and I forget this other brother's name, but the children of uh, Rome, you know, these two, these two right. um, children of um, wow, one of the uh, leaders there, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. And then, uh, so the, in the sculpture, it's, it's a, a wolf with the two babies feeding off the breasts, but these breasts, like. Uh, remind it's a, again a tribute to another famous sculpture you know so i'm trying to wow. plug mine in, into all this history of, of very insightful other, creative yeah, and thoughtful past, and so many other words i can't think past, of right now uh, exactly other past uh, uh -huh. contributors to the art and then i moved on wow. to uh, another model and then i asked her well what's your passion and she was a volleyball player oh nice so this is the volleyball player uh-huh. And um, I made it slightly more, it's one third maybe of life size, but I really tried to uh, capture the, um, to be better at the, the, the muscle shapes and the, the leg shapes and all that stuff. So I think I really... I can see it. the ears, you know, the nose, the mouth yeah. on this. I, I mean, it's really good. And what you'll notice is that she's called a volleyball girl, but if you look at the ball, it's, it's not volleyball size. So again, coming back to my empowerment of women, she's the volleyball girl, but really this represents the earth and, and the universe, like right. the, the, her, her universe. And she's playing with it. She's in control of her universe. Wow. You know, so she's playing with the world, this volleyball girl. So you could really feel this divine feminine uh, yeah, power in coming so in. The <laughs> collection is all in the works. And then I moved on. Back to like um, the history again, and I thought I had this vision, like uh, of like uh, this this divine feminine in the future. Right. So she would come back to us, you know, like, and um, uh, with because in my mind, you know, like the future is feminine because you know I read these these articles and things saying that. There's, there's quite some good chances that uh, because men are not fertile anymore and they, you know, like they, they're not gonna, um, the babies are not gonna be so often. So m m women can actually, I read this, I, I, probably true, but women can create other women. Although this has been changed in recent science, I think now that uh, they can make a male or female from any 
a genetic composition mm -hmm. that's more intense. But naturally, a woman can create another woman without help of men. When you take only the, um, mm -hmm. uh, don't get me into the details of this. And then, uh, <laughs> so this this idea Been that a woman yeah. can create women, uh, it fantasizes this world, you know, like where there's only women in the future. Right. And society is composed of women only. But then she's from the future, you know, very futuristic and stuff. And yeah. she's zapping with this energy, killing Rome. So this is, this sculpture is called Rome wow. is Dead. Wow. And what it is, is this, it, it represents this change of the female energy, uh, you know, in the future. And then she, it, Rome is down here, you know, representing in concrete the ancient Rome, of course, you know. All right, and traditional there's... Traditional sculpting. There's the body down there, yes, you know. there's a guy that's dead here. <laughs> and then you can wonder, what is she actually killing him? Or is she infusing him? Because look at the black, yes. how it's like sending all these facets. So, I prefer you know, that. I could yeah. have pushed it even, you, you know, so that there will be several facets on here on the arm, let's say. Mm -hmm. But I leave that to uh, trigger the mind, you know, as as to what's happening here. But this is um, a glorious female coming back to, uh, or, you know, just transforming, reshaping man, mm -hmm. male, to actually be wow. um, more... More comprehensive. And it's brilliant in the same vine here. Like, yeah, it's same axis mundi, yeah. the energy of uh, uh, divine energy that comes in and uh, feeds this, this whole. So if I translate energy. this right now, it says a dramatic scene where antique man uh, dominating uh, terrestrial life in previous times is. How would you say foudroyé in English? Uh, like zapped. Thunder, you know, zapped yeah. yeah, zapped by an android woman, which is assisted by technology. Artist here is proposing a possible future of humanity where the roles of power are changing. It's actually what we're get, we're going into, right? More of the divine feminine. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. we don't like to say in power or in control, but at the same time, it it's still more of that energy that will be present kindness love compassion versus uh ego and and competition and you know all the rest that um well, i would even go further in this push you know in this very like uh present time mm -hmm. where, where the, the united states are push and europe i guess but mostly the united states are pushing this idea of a desexualization you know, mm -hmm. where non-gender and binary and trinaries and foreignaries and whatever they are you know mm -hmm. aliens. and um the idea that that it's it's this last resort idea from these males you know that's still you know like this this rome is dead situation yeah where they're still trying to control the narrative, you know? And they're saying like, oh guys, you can be girls, you know? We don't need <laughs> women. Like they don't need to have the energy because us guys, we can be girls and have the energy of the girls. But no, you can't and have I'm babies, like, guys. <laughs> what the fuck are you thinking? You know, it's, like, uh, it's like, whoa, you know? It's, like, it's interesting. Out. I like your train of thought on this. It's, yeah. it's, it is thought provoking. Yeah. Uh, so it's trying to steal it yet again, this female uh -huh. energy. Not yeah. okay. No, and you obviously captured uh, the empowerment of women through these um, beautiful, amazing yeah. structure, uh, sculptures and yeah, structures, I, I guess. I went back to the idea of like... Um, Ooh, and like, gold like, this, this time, this, huh? This female. And this, I changed my technique and this one, I this is live size one-to-one. -one. Okay. And what I did is that I plastered this woman, thankfully very cooperative in my process, and uh, like uh, with the sheet uh, plaster, and it made a perfect shape. This is like the perfect wow. uh, shape. That's why it's so precise. Uh -huh. And then I used that mold and reassembled it, and then welded all over it and created what? this sculpture, which I call the uh, the Genese. And essentially, uh, concept being is that um, we have this uh, prehistoric, you know, like a uh, human that's crawling, that was crawling, and then she, she's starting to rise up and, and walk on her legs, 
and then she sees this wall and she puts her hand through the wall right you know? and then she transcends this is the universe she 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 Beautiful. she essentially you know like and her her eyes her face is is looking at this this transition so essentially it's like um announcing the the what you call it the uh, ascension yeah mm -hmm. yeah I, I i mean it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant it's it capturing so much and that's eight years old so energy yeah. and so much um yeah. of what's happening in the world right yeah. and if not that then it's an awesome garden pot you know yeah <laughs> yeah so you've been there's some quite few and then uh, we're getting down to uh, the um the, the the contemporary my last one introduction there was um, okay oh well before we get to that one like um i had this uh Unfortunately, as an artist, you have to deal with the fact that you don't have any money. So <laughs> when you realize that unfortunate fact, you know, and then you keep <laughs> a asking the universe, well, you know, can you send a little bit down here? You know? <laughs> and then, uh, you know, it does happen, thankfully, you know, like Dennis that way. But at some point I had to move my shop maybe, oh, 30 times in my life, you know. Okay. <laughs> one of these times was uh, particularly frustrating and... Uh, I had a table, a metal table, and the, the bottom shelf was absolutely loaded of little pieces. Because right. every time I would cut something, little rat packer here, I would throw it underneath there, you know, because I was yeah. like, oh, I'll make a sculpture with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, all the facets. But the, fac the other ones, I actually bought material and made the little squares I wanted, uh, you know. Like, uh -huh. So, uh, you know, art get my work out there and, but uh, all these little pieces I never really done anything and it was time to move and I was like I'm not putting that into boxes and moving it. So uh, I gotta make the sculpture now right. and I'm like what do I do well and I realized well you know my issue right now you know is like life the universe is like um is trying to steal my universe because my shop is my universe you know it's like my vortex yeah. so I'm like well, I'm going to make the universe. So I'm like, well, what's the universe? So I, I read about all these, uh -huh. what shape is the universe? You know, a sculpture has a shape. So I'm like, okay. So I read about this and I was fascinated that the universe potentially has a shape, you know, our universe. I'm talking uh -huh. about ours, you know, yeah. there's, there's hundred millions of others. But, um, and then most likely the shape is a, a, is a donut or like sort of apple shape and it has a vortex. So it goes like, um, uh, see, this is my apple shape that I chose to be the most like, likely scenario. And then it goes into a vortex. You can zoom in here. You see it. Nice. And then it goes into the deep and comes back out down here. Boom. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's like a apple vortex shape. And I took all the pieces that were on that table. Can you imagine? I, 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 in, I built it as my universe. Wow. So this, this, I, this is the sculpture, uh, and it's called Universe. So, and I don't have it here, but one, one time I had this around a, a lake, and the uh, universe fell into the lake. <laughs> oh, okay. So, and then people were telling me, well, it's quite heavy, you know, and especially if it's in the mud down deep, like yeah. feet below. So... People were telling me, well, it's a bit complicated. Maybe you should just leave it there for prosperity. And I'm like, there's no way I'm leaving the universe in the mud. <laughs> and then, so I had to create, and this is like the gem of the story. Okay. The universe extractor. Oh, nice. Very well put. <laughs> I can show that to you later. Yeah, absolutely. And then I created the universe extractor and I extracted the universe from the mud. And it was reborn again. Wow, that's awesome. I love your description of this because it's almost kind of what we're doing here right now, right? <laughs> Trying to get ourselves and our universe out of the yeah. mud. And so, huh. Yeah, they're all for sale, these sculptures, but they're so tem there's so much thematic in them that most people are like, they, they, once they hear the story, they wouldn't, they don't know how to, what to do. Right. 
They may have their own story it's attached to it's it. A, it's a very, it's a, I, pro, I call it my private collection at this point. Yeah. Sure. It may resonate with someone for sure because collectors sometimes want to yeah. put their hands on something that has so much energy. I can see someone offering me some a chunk of money and get the whole thing in their huge garden. I, you know, if I had lots of money, that's what I would do. Yeah. But, um, because I mean, there's so much energy, creative, passionate, down to earth energy that went into these things uh, that I wouldn't be surprised that Especially a lot of people. All you women out there that are like uh, managing the managing the shit. <laughs> so, okay, what is this one? This is my most recent one. This is we'll call it the COVID, COVID era sculpture. You know? Okay. And then again with the model, and I I did the same thing with the plaster molding. Uh, instead of metal, I use concrete uh, okay. to come up with these really, really re realistic shapes. And um, I, this is uh, Kelly. So she's balancing the Indian goddess. And I came to realize Kelly is, is the most powerful goddess woman ever created. It's just, it's, she's more powerful than the goddess God Kali. himself. You know why? Because she's the only... Um, well, one can assume that God has all these powers also, but like her story, Kelly, she's the maker and destroyer. Mm -hmm. So she, she renews, she recycles. So she's the only one in the pantheon, Indian pantheon, which can destroy other gods to the benefit of re, 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 um, it's like a little bit like Roma's, Roma's right. Death. She, she can destroy them and bring them back to life when they're bad, you know? So, She's the only one who can do that. She comes in and she squashes them with her weapons and her six <laughs> arms and she's like destroys and she's, right. she's a, a, a goddess of war, a little bit like uh, our, our own uh, Christian god. And um, so there she is, you know, like with this, uh, and she's balancing off this uh, board. Nice. She's not complete yet. Like um, Work in progress. She, yes, her, her body is here. And then she oh, has, I see. So that's yes, why the leg or the arm the here. The arms. And then and this is her little oh, her I see. shoulder that's falling apart now with the weather. But um, And there's a head somewhere. And then it, it goes on top here. And then Hopefully that's not the head that just splattered on Hopefully the ground. Hopefully not. But, uh, <laughs> I have more material. I'll make her another head. And then, um, but yeah, so this is cool to also see some work in progress here. Um, her weapon is not here. <laughs> so yeah and then essentially so the that's concept, what you do like yeah you it's like uh, this wire metal i want it to be very rough like that this this is almost yeah. a finished product there this just uh missing the whole front part of her and then i have a back part which is like really nice i find yeah. nice so that's it you know so that goes on top right here that's it. The nice. only thing the that sort Kali. of got me stopped there is like um, the balancing. I didn't want to have more connection than that. And so I think I'll have to make her uh, some sort of, of cape so that I can have a third leg. Because right. unfortunately, it's not going to... This thing is super heavy. Like, yeah, especially with the top already on. Already, it's eh? like over 300 pounds. Look and at the foot. Like, this is a perfect... Um, yeah, it's cast. Uh, it's yeah. cast. It's really nice. But, but also, you know, cast, you know, worked a little bit, but has that ballerine, you know. Yes, absolutely. Very like. So that's it. That's the. Uh, wow. The, the, the sculpting. And I have my. So we're heading over to the Universe Extractor site, <laughs> which is pretty much at your studio, right? Yeah, you can find the uh, studio uh, for the garden over there. Two things I dropped in there. And I'm pretty sure I left it behind there. So everything is overgrown now. Uh huh. Project. Well, you're uh, definitely into lots of projects. Very uh, skillful. Right there it is. And this is the universe extractor. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So you put 
chain here and then you throw it and you grab the universe right so if you ever <laughs> lost your universe i got i can rent it <laughs> or you can buy one of these universe extractors <laughs> at g at jfbertrand.com dot <laughs> ca with uh jean-francois bertrand so now you got lots of uh links and yeah totally awesome video to, and pictures too <laughs> Thank you so much. I truly so appreciate these um, wonderful uh, collections, creative masterpieces that you've uh, shared with coming. us today. Yeah. Thank you so much.